All right, welcome everybody. I'm so excited for this unique opportunity to touch base with Jamie Schulman. He's the co-founder of HubDoc. And the reason we're having this screen share, the reason we're doing this, this recording in the first place is because, you know, through the Growing Your Firm podcast, through our work at Jetpack, we hear so many questions about, well, what are tools that can help us deal with X, Y, and Z. And we've been hearing about HubDoc. I think Jamie and I first connected about a year ago. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to have them on for a special type of episode where we really learn more about the application itself, why uh, they, they, they built in the first place, who it's for, some scenarios that could really help out your firm. Uh, and my hope is that this really gives you a deep dive into how this could potentially be beneficial to your firm. Then obviously reach out to HubDoc if you have more information. So without further ado, Jamie, welcome to uh, this episode. Oh, thanks, David. I appreciate it. I can't believe it's been a year, but I think you're right. Uh, so <laughs> Time, time flies in startup world. It's like, you know, six months. It, it actually feels like, you know, six years or vice versa. Six years feels like six months. <laughs> so, exactly. Well, I'm, I'm not going to, I know people are on the call to take a look at your story, your application, learn about it. I'm going to chime in and give some questions. But the first thing I want to do is, of course, we're looking at the homepage at hubdoc.com. I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. And what I would love is to just hear a little bit of, of why you started HubDoc, you know, what, what's the goal with the application, uh, what can companies kind of expect, and then we'll really do a deep dive into, um, you know, the, the software and people can really learn about the features and, and, and how firms are really utilizing it in, in very strategic ways. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, David. And do you see my screen now with the uh, robot and the savvy startup yep. badge in the top right? Awesome. Oh, Taking a look at it right now. Yeah, no, great. I, th I appreciate you having me, and thanks for anyone who's listening. I appreciate it as well. Um, yeah, I'm one of the two Jamies, and uh, and uh, and we started HubDoc uh, about 150 years ago. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It feels like it sometimes. Uh, it was about three or four years ago, and the the story behind it was simply that he, uh, Jamie and I uh, had started and run a previous business together, and it was at that business that the idea where we came up with the idea for HubDoc, we, we found that doing the bookkeeping and the accounting of our business to be quite frustrating. Uh, we were you know, continually being asked for, uh, you know, for documents and data and asking, asked questions uh, by our bookkeeper and accountant. And we didn't have a ton of visibility into our business. It was much more administrative. Uh, we learned that that's how our bookkeeper and accountant felt about us. We weren't particularly reliable. Uh, and so after we, we ended up selling that business and we looked into this question of are we the only ones feeling this way and it turns out that, I, I thought this stat was interesting, that north of 50% of the advisor-client relationship uh, between accountants and bookkeepers and their clients, is, over 50% of it is administrative, uh, defined as a whole host of ways, but data entry and collecting documents and asking questions. And, and really, um, you know, these uh, bookkeepers and accountants are, are meant to be and want to be and would be valued as, as advisors giving advice as opposed to, you know, administrators uh, looking to get documents and data. And so we built Hub, uh, HubDoc as a way to alleviate that pain and to sit alongside whatever GL one is using but to eliminate all that administration. And so on this screen, you know, we say it's it's one place to manage all your documents automatically. Now we were the Savvy Startup Award winner at Slater Conference, which was kind of fun. But I, I pulled this up here though to show you the next screen, which is this is what we're focused on, David, and that is, um, and, and we're achieving this, is, is having advisors never have to ask their clients again for a document. We hear over and over again, and I have talked to thousands of accounting and bookkeeping firms, and and staff at all levels and it's just there's a lot of asking asking again for documents and answers to questions and we want to eliminate that and then ultimately there'll be no more data entry because whatever documents we go and collect we can automatically create the entries in the GL uh, leaves you with an audit proof business meaning we have the source documents that might be needed for an audit and yet it allows the advisor to frankly serve more clients with less time you know make as much or more money and yet deliver a better experience which is less of the uh, of the nagging administration so that's kind of the background of HubDoc is that we and we launched the product about two and call it two years ago roughly um, spring of 2014 and uh, and we now are working with uh, thousands of firms thousands of accounts of bookkeepers and many many clients um, and uh, and uh, going forward uh, I thought what I might show is just two quick screens which is just I think people know that traditionally the back office of a business is much about closing a month, quarter, or a year. It's a rush at the end of the year. It's limited visibility. It's paper documents. Um, and really where everything is moving now, and it's moving fast, is towards this idea of 
getting real-time financials, providing you know advice right after the month ends, if not in real time throughout the month. Everything's digital. One can be forward thinking, not backward looking, and often there's a fixed accounting cost. Uh, both fixed cost for the advisor in, in, in delivering their service, but also fixed for the client. Um, and before I jump into the product, I, I did want to say, David, that you know we found success with these certifications we put together that people are giving us great feedback, and we've tweaked them based on feedback, which is one can go and get certified on HubDoc. If I were to click on this link, you'd see that it'll pull up a site that'll have certifications for HubDoc, for HubDoc with Zero or QuickBooks or Build.com, etc. And it's a short kind of 20, 30 minute uh, certification uh, process that's working quite well. We also give free accounts um, for not just pro advisors, so for pro advisors, but also really any bookkeeper and accountant who wants one will give a free account, which lets you kind of get addicted to the product and the automation and then ultimately would consider using it with clients. Yeah, That's I, I, HubDoc. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I, I just had a quick question just to chime in for a little bit. And so, you know, the types of firms that you work with, are, are these, you know, is there a firm size that you find to work really well with this with the account or is it more type of the service or can you tell me a little bit more? I mean, who, who are the best type of customers that, you know, kind of jump on to HubDoc? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a super question. Uh, you know, and, and we spoke, as we said, like about a year ago, things have changed um, in, in a good way uh, and have accelerated. I would say... I mean, at a high level, the people that are best for using something like HubDoc is that people that want to be efficient, and, and I'm not being silly here, people that want to be efficient, that want to be productive, that want to serve more clients with less time, perhaps scale their practice, and are comfortable with technology. There are people out there that say, I like my paper, uh, and I, I used to be, oh, I still am an attorney, so I, you know, I, I appreciate paper <laughs> at times. So there are people that feel, I, I, I like my paper, I don't like digital, I don't trust the internet, uh, I, don't look to, I don't want to scale. I like going to my clients' offices and sitting down with them. Um, and so it wouldn't be for people that are looking to stick with a world of kind of paper and in-person meeting all the time and not using technology. But that's the high level. Uh, once it's, I'm presuming most people are comfortable with being efficient, productive, and using technology. Uh, it really started out as more of a focus on bookkeeping and, you know, just me, I would call it bookkeeping, write-up work, uh, outsourced accounting. People have different terms for it, but the idea of, of the preparation of financial statements. It really started at the bookkeeping end where it could be someone who's a one-person shop and they've got their 10 or 20 clients uh, up to a few people or maybe it's a firm of maybe 10 or 12 people who do bookkeeping. But then we now find ourselves, there's been a ton of interest at the high end, you know, literally the top 100 firms in the U.S., uh, about, about a quarter of them are using HubDoc in some capacity. Often it's piloting it or using it with just a few clients, and in some cases it's rolling out. But it goes from the small bookkeeping firm right up to the major accounting firms uh, and in, everything in between. So any firm of any sort that is, that is needing to get documents and data about or from clients, uh, they're using HubDoc. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, nice. And so um, I'll now, I thought what I might do is just kind of jump in, David, and, and, and I'd love you to ask questions at any time, but uh, it probably would be easy if I just log right in and, and, and show some of what we're, what we're doing. I'm going to log in right now, and I'm going to log in as an advisor, a bookkeeper, an accountant. Uh, some people log in with their Intuit credentials, which uh, people find helpful to not have to remember another password. Uh, I use as my kind of demo account here Homer Simpson as the CPA. My son loves the Simpsons, so it, uh, it reminds me of him uh, as I do this. And so this is what it looks like as a console or a dashboard when one first logs in as an advisor. And you'll see here there is the free account that HubDoc gives. Uh, we give anyone who's an advisor a free account. And here are my clients that I have using HubDoc. This is where I would add a new client. I'll just spend five seconds on this. You'd add a new client with a name and an email address, and you can manage staff. If you have staff, whether it's one or whether it's 100, um, when you click on the staff button, you can choose your staff member and decide that maybe you know, Chief Wiggum here is working on too many clients. So you can reduce how many clients that Chief Wiggum is working on, or perhaps you can grant access to Chief Wiggum to the client. So it's a way to manage which staff are working on which clients if you have staff. Coming back to here on this dashboard, we're starting to add more uh, functionality here that we're learning uh, is helpful, or and we're learning it from uh, the advisors. For example, which clients have documents that need reviewing? Some don't, so don't go into those clients. Some have a status. The red triangle means there's a password that needs to be changed. So we show a bunch of those here, uh, so you can um, see what that looks like, and I'll come to that. But most importantly, I'll just log right into a client. Uh, my client, Quickie Mart, here, I just opened in a new tab up at the top, and this will give us a nice look into what a typical HubDoc account looks like. 
Um, again, we're focusing on automation, making one's life easier, serving clients, and at, at the end of the day, it also makes the client's life easier. We import documents and data, and then we sync and share at places like Zero, QuickBooks, you know, Build.com, ShareFile, and there are about another 10 or 20 uh, destinations uh, that we could speak to, including Sage and FreshBooks and Intact and others, as well as storage platforms. But the importing is where people get started uh, most often. We pull in documents so you don't have to ask for them from clients, and it's these two buttons that drive the collection of the documents. Adding an account when I click on it, it looks very much like a bank feed that some people are familiar with in the uh, accounting system, but it's not a bank feed because we don't pull in data, we pull in the documents. So one might put in Chase Bank if that was their bank, and HubDoc will not bank statements from Chase. They might put in ADP to get their payroll reports or maybe AT&T for their bills. They might put in Amazon because their client buys a lot of stuff on Amazon or PayPal because they get, and I could go on. We are pulling in documents and data from, uh, but specifically documents from these vendors that are online so the client doesn't have to go get them so you don't have to go get them. And a quick example would be I have a Bank of America account so I'll click on a popular company here, Bank of America. And what the advisor does is puts in the client's credentials here. And if they don't have the credentials, they have the client do this. They click add an account. It would ask a security question here uh, if there was a security question. Uh, and you'd answer it. And then when I close this, I'll show you what's happening. HubDoc is going to automatically create a folder where my mouse is because it's alphabetical called Bank of America. There it is. And now what it's going to do is it's going to pull in all available bank statements, check images, deposit images, e-transfers, payments, bills, whatever is on the bank's website, but let's focus on the statement for a sec. It's going to pull it in here and pull all historical documents and they'll put them in folders and subfolders right there. And then every night HubDoc goes out and looks for new documents. And if there are new documents, like the check is cleared or a statement's been issued, HubDoc automatically pulls it in here. So when you come into HubDoc, the documents will be there. And what people typically do is they go to add an account, they hit Amex, they put in their credentials and have us go fetch Amex statements. Then they get excited and they have their client uh, maybe they'll have their client put in Comcast, put in the credentials, hit add an account, and HubDoc will be now pulling in all those uh, statements. It just means that no one, yeah. It, when you when you say so, either either you know the firm can add them for the client, or if you want the client to add it, what does what does that process look like for a client to add them? Do they get a unique URL they, where they add it, or, or how does that function? If you don't have that information, but you want the client to add it, how does that contact look? Yeah, th no thanks. Uh, I got excited there. Uh, it's it's simply a matter of under there's an account area like a, a profile space where you can just add a collaborator. And so when you add a collaborator to the account, you put the client's name in there, they would have access to here, they would come on here, and they would put this in here. Uh, perfect, or, perfect. or many people are screen sharing the way we're doing now, and they just say to the client, hey, go to Amazon, put in your credentials, and they do it that way. So they get the same uh, ability as the advisor would have. Um, and so that's the fetching, which I obviously, it, it appears, get excited about, and I'll stop the fetching. But you can see whether it's Comcast, whether it's Amex, or whether it's your bank, it also can be vendors that are quite popular, like PayPal. And the second you buy something on Amazon, it'll be in here. And if I were to scroll further down, um, what I was looking for was a check. I think I've, I thought I found a check. There's a check. So just to give you the idea that we also pull in checks. Um, but what I wanted to show you next was um, this button is for documents that are not, I'm going to say, fetchable. Um, and that's like a receipt. Sorry about this little notification. So whether it's a receipt, say, from a restaurant, or maybe it's a supplier bill, something that's one-off, that's not online somewhere and accessible through some kind of portal, uh, you could just snap a photo with the, our mobile app or email it in. If it comes in by email, you can scan it directly. And we have a deal coming up with ScanSnap with Fujitsu where you can press a button and everything will just automatically go into a HubDoc from the ScanSnap scanner. So whether it's scanning or browsing your computer, but more commonly, emailing in or snapping a photo, the documents can come in here. And um, I mentioned that because, I, well maybe I'll pull one up here as an example. Like Best Buy, for example, I snapped a photo of that receipt. So if you buy something at Best Buy, have your client just snap the photo. That's it, they do nothing more. Um, if they get a, a, a bill from a lawyer, for example, like this one here, they can just email that straight into HubDoc. And David, regardless of how the document comes in, whether we're fetching it like this hydro bill, or whether it was that photo, um, of Best Buy or whether it's this bill from Denton's, on the right side, we pull out the data. So this is a bill from Denton's, the invoice number, the date, the due date, the currency, and the amount. That is all being pulled out uh, from the document. 
uh, when it gets sent in, whether it was that Best Buy receipt, whether it was a bill that we fetched from, say, Comcast, or whether it was an email to the bill. We pull this data out. So that eliminates now the need to do any data entry because all that one needs to do is just deliver this document with this data over to a, a GL. And you can see it's zero, it's QBO, it's bill.com, it goes down to Intact and Sage and FreshBooks and many others. But let's pick on um, QuickBooks for now because uh, it's here. Uh, what one would do is set up the rule for the vendor just once. So this is the first time that Denton's has come in. I would choose whether it's a bill or a purchase. Those are QuickBooks terms. Or I would choose what the chart of account is. We pull that in from QuickBooks. Uh, the vendor name is there. If it was new, you just would create a new one. And then there are other fields you can see here like tracking class, location, department, put in a note, is it billable, etc. And before I publish this to QuickBooks, I would just save that, meaning that's how I want Denton's to be treated going forward on this document that was sent in. And you can even ask us to auto-publish it, meaning next time that the document comes in, whether it's Comcast and it's fetched by HubDoc from the Comcast website, or whether it was a bill sent in, automatically create the entries with the data that you've extracted, HubDoc, and also attach the document. So I hit QuickBooks, I hit Publish, and what that just did was that just sent that over to QuickBooks and coded a transaction and attached the document there. And frankly, I can do the same for zero. People want to use zero. Uh, you can see this looks about right. I could now just say publish, and now that's created that in zero. You wouldn't, you wouldn't typically be using two um, accounting software. Here's, a, here's a QuickBooks. Down here will be Denton's, and you can see HubDoc has auto-created this entry called Denton's with the bill, and the due date, and my note, and that count, and the total down there, and then magically the document is auto-attached inside QuickBooks. And I might as well do it because there's zero. I'm under bills for Quickie Mart. You can see there is Denton's now. When I click on Denton's, um, the document will be there coded, and then the document's also attached up here. And that's how Zero does it if you haven't seen Zero before. And does the it create Denton's as a new customer if it's not in there? Yes. Or, okay, okay. Uh, a, a new vendor. This would be a vendor, a supplier. Oh, a vendor. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then the final thing I'd say, just because people ask us this all the time, um, HubDoc is a great uh, e color filing cabinet. If you need to look up something like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of what I'd look up, like maybe where was that Best Buy you know, document. HubDoc has great search for looking up documents, um, and uh, you can use this as a filing cabinet. But we're learning that some people have workflow already set up where they use Box or ShareFile or SmartFault. And so I thought I would just show you. You can see we connect to all of them, and there's, I'm trying to think of others, Google Drive and Dropbox. And so if you just hit Publish, what you'll see here is that just delivered that document to Dropbox. Um, which I think should be signified by, um, well, I can pop into Dropbox to show you. Or I could send it over to Smart Vault or to Box. And I have some of them open up top here. You can see that you know, the documents are going into Box and they're going into, I'd have to log into ShareFile to show you. But Smart Vault people love, the documents can go there as well. I just want to make sure people know that if they've got something set up for documents, we can auto-fetch them, pull up the data, and deliver them there as well if you'd like. That's kind of HubDoc in a nutshell. I, like I would highlight that we auto-fetch documents, whether it's your statements or your bills. We give you a way to send in the one-off receipts or documents like this or this, and we deliver them places and auto-create all the entries there, massively eliminating the administrative work and reducing the amount of time one would spend on the administrative aspect of their practice. So the feedback we're hearing is, and I'm just repeating this, things like, you know, well, you changed my life, but that's dramatic. When people say, you changed my life, you allowed me to see my kids more because I'm spending now, you know, 10 hours a month per client instead of 25. Or you're allowing me to scale now properly and effectively and efficiently. You're allowing me to go to value pricing because I now have kind of fixed costs and a bunch of efficiencies that allow me to charge price points my clients will pay and it allows me to earn the margin. So that's the feedback we're hearing is it's really allowing people to take their practice to the next level. Yeah, I mean, th th this is awesome. I think, you know, without a doubt, if you're listening and you have not investigated a tool like this, then I think it absolutely can be transformative. One thing I always like to look at is, you know, if, if where are, let's say you bill out $100 an hour, well, during your day, let's say you're not doing billable work all the time, well, are you doing those 5 or $10, $10 an hour tasks? versus your $500, I mean, surely you can get a lot more leverage out of certain tasks. And I feel like this really automates those those items that really are not adding a lot of value to the client. You know, final, I know we only have a couple minutes left for questions, but, you know, I, 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 I would be hit over the head by the listener if I didn't ask this. So what's what's the pricing model? I'm a, I'm a you know, I run a bookkeeping practice. I, you know, I have, you know, 200 clients. 
what what do I do to roll this out to 200 clients? How does the pricing scale? You know, things like that. How does that typically work? Yeah, and and, and I'll start with just because um, I want to make sure I don't forget to say this, and that is reach out to me. This isn't how you reach out to me. I'm Jamie S at Hubdoc.com. Reach out to us. Um, come get the free account to get started because I would love to chat with you if you're a person with a practice, whether it's 200 clients or two clients. Um, but the answer to the question of pricing is we've taken a very a simple approach that seems to be resonating and that is it's one price. Um, there are discounts which I'll explain but the one price is uh, David, you get unlimited connections. So these connections, we want to motivate people to get automated. So they can connect to as many of these as they want. And we have people with, I mean, you'd be surprised, dozens and dozens. So as many connections as you want, it's all included. It's as many, it's as many integrations as you want. So connect us to any of these. So go QuickBooks or Zero, go Bill.com, go Box, do them all. Um, un unlimited. And then it's unlimited documents. So these documents come in and there's an unlimited number of documents which we'll pull data out of. Uh, so there's no limit to the documents which people value and then finally there's no limit to the users So whether it's you at your firm you can have every person at your firm uh, on this account you could also have the client have as many people with the client on this account and it's all included so that's just to say there's no limits to anything people always ask well for how many users or how many documents and everything's stored forever um, and the price is twenty dollars a month period it just turns out that when you have multiple clients we give discounts and so in this case with Homer Simpson I don't know how many he has here, but I can just tell you that the discounts are, the price breaks are at five, 25, and 100. So at five clients, the price becomes $18 a month per client for all the clients. And then at 25 clients, it becomes $16 a month uh, for all the clients. And then at 100, it goes into $14 a month per client, which people do the math on how much time they're saving. And, and the time savings, whether it's fetching, labeling, downloading, dealing with, extracting data from these documents, significantly outweighs the cost of 2018 16 to $14 per month. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the big thing with, with any tool is, one, of course, you have to use it. So I recommend go check out HubDoc, take a look, talk with Jamie. Uh, we get emails from him and his team a lot. They're all very value-add. They're great people over there. So go check it out. And then really think, I mean, whether it's HubDoc or anything other, any other program, tool, whatever, think about the ROI. You know, I, I think there's a lot of leverage that firms can get. You know, if you can save two, three hours a week, and uh, if you're looking, well, how do I spend those two, three hours extra? Why not open up a, a client file and see what kind of value add you can provide to them, give them an industry report, try to, you know, touch base with them and talk about other services, attend that networking event, you know, invest in other marketing channels, whatever it may be. Now you have this time to, to look at more impactful activities. Um, but uh, so if somebody wants to sign up, we have the links. Uh, Jamie, they can just go to hubdoc.com to check it out, right? And then get started with you and your team. Exactly. I mean, I'm just pulling it up right now. Write to hubdoc.com, try account for free, and then we'll reach out to you and make sure you have that free account and get you going. We, we also take our customer success and customer service very seriously, and so we'll be there anytime, whether it's phone, email, chat, you name it, um, uh, to help out. Awesome. Well, J Jamie, this has been this has been great. I hope everybody that is watching this uh, sees a lot of value in a tool like this. And you got the crash course demo, of course. If you want to see more, go ahead and check it out at HubDoc. Jamie, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, David. I appreciate it.